some software might do by default, but it gets a little bit confusing these days because you'll recall that we have the normal depreciation for taxes is usually like a maker's depreciation, which is a double declining balance, usually half year convention oftentimes, which we'll talk about later, which makes sense from a normal accounting standpoint for the most part. They're copying accounting, best accounting practices for the most part. And then they added these upfront items, including the 179 deduction and then possibly bonus or special depreciation, which is also an upfront thing, which is the deviation from normal, generally accepted accounting principles. So now that you have these multiple things that could allow you to depreciate it upfront, then you come up with the question of, should I take the 179 deduction or a special or bonus depreciation upfront? And that gets a little bit confusing. So it's possible that you, you pick a combination that's not, not optimized now, some software might default, for example, to take either the 179 deduction or the special unless you tell it not to. And so then, and that'll be the default situation. But again, you want to make sure that you kind of measure twice and cut once, optimizing what you think the deduction should be up front when you have these long-term assets that are going to have an impact on multiple periods into the future if you can. And then if there's a problem with it, then of course you might be able to amend the return, but you would have to do that within the time frame allowed in order to amend the return. So uh, the amended return must be filed within the time prescribed by law. The amended return must also include any resulting adjustments to taxable income. Once made, the revocation is irrevocable.